Okay, well, out on the table here in front of me, I have everything that we got when we were out with Sue these past few days. This includes going to Finders Keepers in York and also the Goodwill in York. So we got a lot of stuff. I'm going to try to keep it in order and we're gonna go over the stuff that we got at the Finders Keepers first. And then we're gonna go over the stuff that we got at the Goodwill, but I might get it all out of order and then we'll just give up on that. Um, I don't have uh, tags still on this stuff. So I'm gonna put our total spend at the Finders Keeper up here in this corner. I'm gonna put it up here in this corner so you can see how much we spent at Finders Keepers because I can't tell you exactly what I spent on everything. And uh, we're gonna go through it. So one of the items that I got at the Finders Keepers was this creamer right here. Now, this may look familiar because recently we got a set of yellow from the Goodwill uh, in Hanover, and it is made by Bartlett Collins. And the set of yellow typically sells for about $20 to $30, depending, well, the set of yellow, uh, depending on the color. Um, it, it comes in a variety of different colors. We just happen to have yellow, but there is red. Um, this is obviously the white. Uh, for the white, I would expect probably to get, I want to say $8 to $12 for just the white creamer. And for somebody who needs to get a replacement, possibly, maybe they broke their creamer and now they have it's just sugar. Um, so we did grab this. Pretty please with that or maybe somebody doesn't even take sugar in their coffee and all they want is a creamer. And so that's all they need. Uh, we also got this guy. This is just a ceramic mushroom. <laughs> I liked the glaze on this. It's just so 1970s. It's pretty great. Uh, this right here, I would expect probably to get I want to say 8 to 12 for it. I don't know if you would stick it in a planter or possibly just out in the garden. This doesn't look like it's been outdoors. It probably hasn't been outside. Uh, but I liked it. I thought it was very retro. And mushrooms are in right now. We're doing pretty well with mushrooms. So grabbed that. Now we've got this Limoges creamer, which is totally different from the mid-century creamer. Uh, this piece right here is Elite Works, is the name on the bottom, and I can't tell you the exact name of the people who are behind Elite Works. I believe one of them is Daughter, D-O-T-T-E-R, um, but I don't, I can't recall off the top of my head. But Elite Works, all of the pieces that I have come across, and I'm generalizing here, but they always have very, very heavy gold. They always have the heavy gold and I don't know if that's just a characteristic of Elite Works or if that's just a generalization that I'm making but that has been my experience with Elite Works is when I come across Limoges Elite Works it is just gold like <laughs> and it's beautiful. Um, so this is just a creamer. We do not have the sugar bowl unfortunately and I looked for it. This piece right here, I would probably expect to get about 15 to 24. It's a beautiful piece. I wish that we had the sugar bowl to go with it. Then we'd be talking a little bit more, but we've only got the creamer. And there is no damage other than a little bit of wear to the gold, which does after time begin to wear, unfortunately. We've got our little basset hound. He is just a little, <laughs> a little pincushion basset hound. Uh, I will more than likely be donating this to my friend Donna at Moon Doggy Coffee. She runs auctions for basset hound rescues across the United States. Um, so she auctions off basset hound items, whether they are figurines or I've seen her auction off ties or all sorts of things. And so she auctions off basset hound themed items and she raises money for various rescues, not just one basset hound rescue in particular, but, but all different sorts of basset rescues across the United States. And she raises money for those. So whenever I come across basset hound items, 
I give those to her and she incorporates them into her auctions. So if you would like to reach out to Donna, if you ever come across Basset Hound items and you want to donate those, um, you can reach her at Moondoggy Coffee. She also runs a coffee roasting business. So her coffee is amazing, by the way. Um, I love it. <laughs> so you can uh, check out her website, Moondoggy Coffee, and uh, reach out to her that way. But that will be going to her. So we're going to set that aside. We also got... Oh, wait. That's backwards. We got a biscuit jar. Now, I usually steer clear of biscuit jars unless they have a little bit of uniqueness to them. So this guy is, is a little bit unique and I'm gonna explain to you why. First of all, the size, it's a little bit larger than a lot of the biscuit jars that we come across. Just by a hair, I mean, it's not a lot larger than a lot of them we come across. But the other reason is because of the design on it. Uh, granted, it is floral, but it is not roses or peonies. It's just, it's these stemmed flowers that are just kind of plain. And I actually like that about them. I, it's not just real floral, I, you know. I liked it. It still has the original handle, so I decided to get it. Uh, I didn't check the bottom for a mark. Oh, it is marked. It is marked. Gold Castle handcrafted Shikusa made in Japan. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I grabbed this. I would expect this to probably sell, I want to say, for about $30. But it is just a nice biscuit jar. And I'm loving that it has its original handle. That's pretty great. We grabbed this guy. Now this piece right here is kind of hard to put a value on because it is hand painted. It's probably just a hobbyist piece. It is not by a famous artist, but it's the content and the subject matter, which is obviously bunnies and they're decorating an Easter egg. And guess what is coming? Easter. So I grabbed this thinking Easter is coming. I can buy this. I can more than likely sell it uh, who is some, to somebody who is decorating for Easter. And I would expect probably to get about $20 for this piece because it's Easter. If it wasn't Easter, I probably first of all wouldn't have bought it. And second of all, probably wouldn't expect to get $20 for it. So I like that piece. Uh, we grabbed this. Now the reason I bought this vase is because it reminded me of Weller Jap Animal, which is a, um, I don't even know what you would call it, but, but it is a, uh, a technique that they use for a short while. And we purchased a vase that was ducks. And I don't know if you remember that, we got it at the flea market for $5 and we flipped it for like $350. But it was very similar to this, just in style. It had this like kind of carved out um, style. It, this is not Weller, I don't believe, but uh, it, it was just, it had a resemblance. And so I saw it and I thought, you know what, I like that. I like the way that, the, the design of that. Um, but this is, this is super heavy. And it's got a, I don't know, it's, it's, a it's a brown glaze, but then it has this matte white and this blue on it. It's not marked anywhere, which kind of surprised me because it is kind of a work of art and usually you expect you know, works of art to be signed and this piece is not. Uh, but I liked it and I thought it was an interesting piece, so I decided to buy it. <laughs> Uh, because it is not signed and because I can't attribute it to anyone, I would probably expect to get 20 to $25 just for the vase factor. Uh, I, I do wish that I could, you know, attribute this piece to somebody, but I uh, unfortunately cannot. So we're going to leave that right there. Now, uh, we do have a train coming. Um, I think we really only have 
one more piece from Finders Keepers, so I'll try to talk about it, and then we'll pause and we'll come back to the Goodwill stuff. But uh, the last piece is this piece right here, and I just grabbed this because I thought it—I felt like it had some age to it. This is reverse painted, and obviously we've got the mirror here. Um, I liked this. Just I don't know. There was something about it. When I walked past it and I saw the imperfections in the glass, I thought, you know, that's got some serious age to it. And, and I would really, I feel like I can appreciate that. So I decided to grab it. I paid $20 for it. I feel like if I was to resell it, I could probably double my money on it. Um, but shipping it would be a pain. So I'd, ha I have to, I'd have to figure out how I'm going to do that. Um, but I liked it. It spoke to me. So we grabbed it. But anyway, um, that was everything we got at Finders Keepers. I'm going to stop the video right here for this train, and we're going to come back, and we'll talk about the stuff that we got at Goodwill. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to talk about everything that we got at the Goodwill. So I will put our total spend at the Goodwill up here in this corner because I've already peeled all the tags. Well, not all of them. Most of the tags off of the stuff that we got at the goodwill so uh let's talk about our daily bread plate so i spotted this on the shelf and i recognized it as eapg which is early american pattern glass or early american pressed glass depending on who you ask i've heard it both ways and some people will argue about that but they can argue all they want because I've heard it both ways. Um, so this plate right here, it is uh, Kansas Jewel and Drew Do Do the Kansas Jewel and Dew Drop is the pattern on the outside, and the inside just says Our Daily Bread. Um, so this plate right here usually will sell for about well, the last one sold leave for like $65, which really blew my mind. Um, but I would expect it to sell for like 25 to $30. Uh, and I don't know the maker of it. I could not attribute it to a maker, but I mean, it's just a plate. So, <laughs> and it's you get PG. There are so many different patterns and stuff. It's sometimes hard to just to figure out who, who makes it. We got this plate as well. This is one of the last items that we were able to find on the shelves. And it was actually kind of buried under some other stuff. Um, but it is a beautiful plate. It is more than likely Japan. Um, it's got some florals and some leaves. This piece right here, I would expect to get anywhere from like 15 to $18 for. It's a nice piece. There are no chips or cracks on it. The gold is still really vibrant. It is hand painted. It's a nice piece. Now we've got planters. Uh, I really liked this planter. And I can tell you why I like this planter is because I see this planter all the time at Target. <laughs> but not really. Um, the, you know, Nowadays, Target is really emulating a lot of the old styles. And this is one of those that I would expect to see at Target. And I could swear I've seen it at Target before. Uh, but this is this is vintage. This is absolutely old. And it's marked USA on the bottom. It's got a mold mark on here. It's absolutely vintage. But this is something that I would expect Target to see and say, hey, we need to make that and we need to sell it in Target. Um, it's just a beautiful shape, mid-century. It's white, it's classic, it's beautiful. And I saw that and I thought, wow, well you look at that. You know, a lot of the times I come across these, and I mean, these pieces were really just floral pieces. They were for florists and they made, you know, floral, floral arrangements in them and they were given away and they weren't really super valuable. Um, but there was just something about the shape of this one that I just, I just really liked. <laughs> that piece right there, I would expect, because of the shape of it, you know, normally we sell those and they sell for like, I want to say $12, maybe eight to 12. Um, for that one, I would expect probably a little bit higher than that. I would expect more like 16 to 18 for that. 
just because of the shape. This piece right here, um, this is ceramic. It's a lot lighter than that one. Uh, that one is more pottery. Uh, this piece, I'm going to say, is more than likely Japanese. It is also, it's, I, I would say it's hand-painted. Um, it's more of a fall design. It's orange flowers. And I want to say like almost grape leaves. These remind me of grape leaves, but they're orange. Um, and, and they've got like vines, I don't know. Uh, but this, this planner right here, I would expect probably is to get 10 to 15 for. Cruel, which is not super old. Do I have it on? No, I don't have it backwards. It's just signed backwards. So I'm looking at the back and it's upside down. Um, so this is actually dated on the back 1992. So it's not a super old piece, um, clearly. But I loved the colors of it and I thought it was very nicely done. And so I decided to, to buy it, especially since it's personalized on the back. Um, Alma S. Dunn framed this. I also made the frame. March 29th, 1992. Uh, and this was $2. So this piece, I would expect probably to get about $20 for. These pieces, these handmade pieces, I don't know what it is, but they look really nice in modern decor. I guess, I guess it depends on, it depends on your decor, but um, they're, they're making a comeback. So I like grabbing those old cool pieces. I'm really waiting for the day when I come across one of those really massive long ones. I want one of those so bad, but I, I'm only willing to pay so much for it because I'm a bargain hunter. So we grabbed this, I should say we, I, I'm singular. I was with Sue, but I was shopping by myself. Um, I grabbed this piece, and I grabbed this piece because it's got a very mid-century modern theme and style to it. It's just very simple, but it's modern. And I don't know who makes it. If you know, please let me know in the comments because I really have nothing to go on except for the squiggly. But I don't even think the squiggly is necessarily a signature. I think it's just that. I think it's just squiggly. So I, I don't know who makes this. But I thought it was a really nice modern looking bowl. And I decided to grab this. I would expect for this to also sell for about $20. Now if I was able to attribute it to somebody and somebody important, it's possible that this could sell for a lot more. But for the fact that it is a bowl and stylistically it is a mid-century modern looking piece, I would expect probably for $20 to $25 for it. Let's cross our fingers and hope that it is a piece by some famous mid-century modern designer. There's always that possibility. Um, so it looks like we've only got two more pieces out on the table. Let's talk about this. Our dolphins. Now I'm not actually going to be reselling these dolphins. I'm going to be gifting them to Ashton, but I left them on the table here just to talk about them briefly um, because they still have their tag on them, but they actually have two tags on them still. Uh, they have their original tag from Community Aid where we no longer shop um, for reason being that their original price was $25. And then <laughs> they have the Goodwill price of $5, where we actually bought this for Ashton. Um, so I don't think I would have ever paid $25 for these. They're not Murano. Um, they're nothing spectacular. I mean, I love my son, but uh, $25 for a pair of art glass dolphins, I don't I just don't know if I could do it. <laughs> so we paid $5 for the dolphins. I think he's going to love adding these to his collection. And um, yeah. So we got these. And last but not least, I think probably one of the most exciting pieces because we actually brought it home and took it out of the frame. 
is this piece right here. Um, so this is actually, actually an original piece, an original piece of artwork uh, by John Nagy. Drew corrected my pronunciation of his last name. He said it's not Gnaggy. I still think it's Gnaggy. Nagy. Um, <laughs> so this is actually an original piece of artwork, and if you hold it, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see. He's named after you, Nagy. Ha 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 ha, you're so funny. Uh, but you can actually see where he, he, I don't even know how to describe it. I believe this is a charcoal and you can actually see the strokes of the, of the charcoal or whatever. Um, but this is just like, it's so cool. The, um, so he was actually the original, he was the original Bob Ross, right? Yep, on NBC. He was the original Bob Ross, the original TV artist guy um, before Bob Ross. And so he's kind of a big deal. And this is one of his original pieces of art. So I, I've looked up comps and his stuff sells anywhere from, what are the comps? About 25 to 700. 25 to 700 dollars. Anywhere in that range. So we paid three dollars for it. I'd be happy with 25. I'd be happy with 700. Uh, anywhere in that range, I'd be happy with. But I think we got a really good piece I think the detailing is really nice and I'm excited to see how it does. So we're going to probably end up listing that. Uh, the, the cool thing about this though is that he matted it himself because the ink that is used on the drawing is also on the matting. So you can see that he actually matted it himself which is pretty cool. Uh, but unfortunately, the glass in the frame was cracked when I bought it, so we had to get rid of the glass frame. Um, and we are going to sell it just as is. So. Anyway, uh, I think we did all right. I think we're going to do okay on this stuff. I'm pretty excited. And yeah, anyway, uh, I guess I will see you guys tomorrow. Well, I won't see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is a flea market video. But Andrew got some really great stuff. From what I hear, he got two pieces that I have been after for years and years and years. Do you show those in the video? Mm, no. Oh, he doesn't show those in the video. You're just going to have to wait for the whole video, I guess. Um, but anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook.